From the ship's bridge, Lieutenant Guy watched the explosion in horror. His next move would be a matter of life and death. This is The Miracle Files. I'm Emily Jones. And I'm Holly Worthington. We're two sisters who love a captivating true story, but we're also seeking more light in our lives. So we're on a mission to find and share unforgettable, uplifting stories of God's miracles. We hope you'll join us on this journey. So Emily, how has your week been? It's been good. I am a little sick right now, so I might sound a little nasally, but I'm doing good. And how about you? You have some exciting news to share? Yes, I have a new grandbaby who was born at 2.30 a.m. this morning. So I'm a little tired right now, but that's awesome. That's so exciting. Well, congratulations. All right, let's jump into the story. Tell us what we're going to be hearing today. Today's story is about a man. His name is Greg Guy. He is a retired lieutenant in the United States Navy. And he grew up in a family that is a longtime military family going clear back to the 1700s. Yeah, he has ancestors who were in the Revolutionary War, the Civil War, World War II, the Korean War. He has a son in the military as well. Oh yeah, that's right. So huge military family. And this is a story about Lieutenant Guy, when he was out on a naval ship off the coast of Africa. And in addition to his military service, this is a man of great faith, and he has a very inspirational story, so we hope you'll enjoy listening. It was a typically hot, humid day on the Indian Ocean. Officer of the deck, Lieutenant Greg Guy, was on the bridge going over the plan for the day, After serving for 12 years in the United States Navy, it was now Lieutenant Guy's responsibility to monitor everything on and around the ship to make sure things ran smoothly. Here's Lieutenant Guy. As an officer of the deck and a conning officer, you have to be aware of everything happening around you so that you could take decisive action if you needed to, but not endangering anybody. I'm essentially the captain when the captain's not on a bridge. Uh, And he has qualified me and um, trusts me to do what he would do. Lieutenant Guy took this responsibility very seriously. But there's also something that happens when you're going through a normal day. It's easy to believe all will be well, that nothing will go wrong with the redundancy of routine. The purpose of Lieutenant Guy's naval ship was to transport troops and supplies. For months, Marines had used the ship's flight deck to run helicopter exercises. All day long, we're maneuvering with these CH-46 helicopters, and they are practicing what's called fast roping. And that's where the helicopter will pick up 15 Marines. It'll go up, circle around the ship, come back, hover over the back end of the ship. And as we're going 20 miles an hour, they'll slide down that rope. And this is the way they would use to overtake a ship. And so it's a hazardous thing, and it's a thing that people got to be aware of. But we're doing this all day. And I've seen that helicopter go around our ship 20 or 30 times. And so I'm not thinking that anything's going to happen. As Lieutenant Guy stood there, staying alert but enjoying the calm, a thought came to his mind. No, not a thought exactly. More like a voice. So I'm standing up on the bridge, and I get this voice in my head and my heart. Greg, look at your winds now. Lieutenant Guy recognized this voice. He'd heard it before. I grew up a Christian of several different denominations, but I accepted Christ when I was 12 years old. He has been at my side my whole life. And if you have a relationship with him, you'll hear him. Because Lieutenant Guy had been guided by this voice his whole life, he knew to listen. And I didn't even question it. And I looked up at the anemometer, and I saw the winds were coming off the port side at about 15 knots. And I've got to take that in consideration for any maneuver that I make. To the layman, it might seem trivial to pay so much attention to the wind. However, when you're on a 9,000-ton naval vessel, almost the length of two football fields, and need to turn the ship abruptly, you can't fight the wind. A ship of that size doesn't turn on a dime. It's essential to have the wind working with you. And while Lieutenant Guy had no idea why he felt this prompting, 
he took it a step further. He immediately devised a plan in case of emergency. Instantly, after I looked at my winds, I completely rehearsed what I was going to do with that ship if something happened, which I wouldn't normally be doing. Completely rehearsed everything. The orders I'm going to give to the helmsman, the orders I'm going to give to the lee helm, who I'm going to contact in the vicinity, how am I going to man up the ship and get ready with the motor whaleboat and with the other helicopters, getting the captain to the bridge, all of these things. So I rehearsed it. And that's when tragedy struck. And then I went out onto the bridge wing, and I watched the helicopter come up the starboard side. He's about uh, 100 yards out, and I'm looking right at that helicopter, and it had a catastrophic engine failure and exploded and went straight into the water. Lieutenant Guy stared in horror. He knew there were over a dozen men aboard the helicopter, but this was it, the moment he had prepared for and he immediately sprang into action and began carrying out the plan that he'd already rehearsed in his head. And instantly I was terrified because I had to make the next move. I'm in charge of everything happening when I'm the officer of the deck. And it just occurred to me, well, I just rehearsed it. And so I stepped in and I had the boatswain of the watch pass the word for captain to the bridge. I'm standing there sounding the ship's whistle, which is an emergency thing that you got to do. We got the motor whaleboat manned up and ready. Uh, we got another helicopter ready to go. At the same time, I'm giving orders to the helmsman, right hard rudder, and starboard engine back so that I could twist the ship and then be heading back towards where that crash site was. The captain joined the bridge as the gigantic ship maneuvered back to the crash site. Lieutenant Guy kept his eyes on the quickly sinking helicopter. If he hadn't been aware of the winds or would have turned the ship the wrong way, it would have taken their ship almost twice the amount of time to get there. The helicopter would have been lost from sight before they reached it, making it almost impossible to find the survivors. Instead, within a miraculous nine minutes, the ship was able to pivot and approach the crash site. The helicopter engulfed in flames and upside down, sank upon the ship's arrival. There in the water, Lieutenant Guy spotted several seriously injured men who had escaped the helicopter, struggling to stay afloat. A number of the people were burned very severely, and were, it was all they could do just to stay above water. There was not a second to lose. Fourteen men had escaped the helicopter, and due to the swift actions of Lieutenant Guy and his team, all of the men who had come to the surface were rescued from what would have been certain death. Tragically, four men did not survive the crash. Though the rescue team searched the ocean for hours, the two helicopter pilots and two other crewmen were never found. Everybody is affected. Everybody is wondering why did this happen? Everybody is wondering, what are we going to tell the families? You become a crew, but they are a part of your family. And it weighs very heavily on everybody involved. The courage and dedication of both the survivors and those who gave all that day stand as a testament to the great sacrifice our military men and women make on all of our behalf. Here at the Miracle Files, we want to express our own gratitude for these brave men and women. While Lieutenant Guy was heartbroken at the loss of four men, he also recognized what a miracle it was that he had been prepared to maneuver their ship so quickly in time to rescue the 14 survivors. Then I went down to my stateroom and just started thinking about everything, and I thought, my God, the Lord gave me that alert two minutes before the crash two minutes before that helicopter blew up. So I had the opportunity to rehearse everything. And we got everybody that came to the surface. And I prayed, and I thanked the Lord for being there with me, because I know he was. Lieutenant Guy is certain that he wasn't alone that day, that he had divine guidance helping him know how to save these men. And after returning to the United States and reflecting on this experience, Lieutenant Guy felt compelled to share what had happened with his captain. When we got back to Pearl Harbor and things had mellowed out a little bit, I went up and spoke with the captain 
I remember very clearly sitting there at his desk and starting to tear up and tell him, Christ told me what to do before that happened. I could have just said, nah, I'm gonna get another cup of coffee. But no, I did what that direction told me to do immediately. Fortunately, Lieutenant Guy listened to the inspiration he received. He was later recognized for his professionalism and quick thinking and was awarded the Navy Achievement Medal. One of the burn victims pulled from the water and rescued that day later went on to help found the Wounded Warrior Project, a nonprofit that has changed the lives of countless wounded veterans. It has helped bring me even closer to Christ. I know he is at my side all the time. I know he is. That definitely affirmed for me that, that Christ is there and he is my savior and he is at my side and will guide me through any situation thick or thin. It's hard to find the right words after a story like that. Anything we say feels pretty inadequate. Um, I think you probably feel the same way I do. Yeah, and this is just a really hard story because it's an example of how not everyone receives a miracle. And it's hard to answer why do some people receive a miracle and others don't. And I think the simple answer is that we just don't know but I think God has a different plan for each of us. And sometimes that's an eternal plan. And so for those who didn't survive, I know he still has a plan for them. And then those who did survive, it's clear he has a plan for them as well. And one of the tangible reasons we can point to is the Wounded Warrior Project. I'm sure there are countless others that we don't know. I know that I'm super grateful for all of them. And especially grateful for those in the military who are willing to sacrifice their lives for us. Yeah, we are so grateful to the many men and women in the military, and we just want to honor them and appreciate them here. And we're grateful for Greg Guy, too. Yeah, Greg is incredible, and I love how faithful he was to not even question it. And I do think that a lot of miracles happen because people are willing to listen to the promptings that they're given. It's true. It makes me really want to be more aware myself. Like if he's ever telling me anything, I want to listen because it's like you never know what his plan is and what he might need you to do. Yeah. And if you want to make a donation to the Wounded Warrior Project, you can go to support.woundedwarriorproject.org. We think it's a really worthy cause. Absolutely. Yeah. And we want to thank Greg Guy as well for him being willing to share this story with us. Yeah, we're truly inspired by him and just think he's great. Yep, he's a great guy. No pun intended. (laughs) (laughs) I'm sure he's heard that his whole life, poor man. (laughs) Thank you for joining us. If you have a miracle to share, contact us at themiraclefiles.com or find us on Facebook. We'll post new episodes on the first day of each month. And if you enjoyed this podcast, please share it and leave us a review. Join us next time as we discover more of God's miracles. And don't forget to look for His light in your own lives. If you'd like to support us on Patreon so we can produce more episodes like this, go to patreon.com forward slash the miracle files. You'll get exclusive access to photos, videos, articles, and other content you won't find anywhere else. We'll also have live chats and we'd love to interact with you there. Thank you so much for your support.